Hello, sisters and brothers, and welcome to Wild Olive Trees. I'm Brother Paul from the Fellowship of the Spirit, and the precept that we are going to address today is Israel for our examples. Sisters and brothers, the Bible says that Israel is for the examples of the rest of the nations. The way they conduct themselves and the way the Lord deals with them is for our example on how to conduct ourselves before the Lord. If you don't know who Israel is, how do you know who to look to for their, for, for their example to show us how to conduct ourselves? If you don't know who Israel is, you'll think they're back in the land in 1948. But Jesus says when he returns, he's going to gather Israel. So can those people that are in the land today that call themselves Israel, that according to the Bible are not Israel, can they be our example? No, the Bible plainly shows who our example is. And let's deal with this. We'll start this off in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. We're not going to read all about Israel. We're just going to show you that they're for our example. But we know that because of disobedience, they're scattered throughout the entire world until our Messiah returns. We could read that. We could read that a hundred different ways. Everything from straight up absolute plain to round about the bush way. But we're going to deal today with Israel being our example. And we're going to start this off in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. 1 Corinthians 10. And Brother Mike, whenever you want to start this lesson, brother, let's start it off in verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Uh-huh. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Now, Paul doesn't things... want us to have a lack of knowledge about this. And you can read about this cloud in Numbers 9, 15, and 16, Deuteronomy 13, 33, um, Deuteronomy 14. I mean, you can read all about this. You can go back into the Old Covenant and read about it. Go ahead, brother. Three. And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. And Paul doesn't want you to be ignorant about the fact that it was Jesus that was dealing with Israel. But for another time, go ahead, brother. Five. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. You can go now back these... to number 14 and read about that. Go ahead. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. And it says these things were for our examples. And you can go back to Numbers 11 and read about that. Go ahead, brother. Seven. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And you can read about that in Exodus 32. Go ahead, brother. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Numbers, the 25th chapter. Go ahead. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Numbers, the 21st chapter. Go ahead, brother. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Numbers, the 14th chapter. Go ahead, brother. One more verse. Now all these things happened unto them for ensamples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. This was written for our admonition. In other words, if you act like this, you're not going to make the kingdom. You're going to get punished, and I'm going to cast you away to the four corners of the earth, but only to get cast away in the second, uh, or in, in Jesus' kingdom, at the end of it, to get cast away to the four corners of the earth, it's called the lake of fire. And that's something we're trying to strive to stay away from. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews 4. So they're our example of how not to be. Hebrews 4. One verse, brother, verse 11. 4 and 11. Go ahead. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the example of unbelief. So he gave us these examples of how Israel fell short in the wilderness. And he's saying, don't let us fall short with the same example of unbelief. 
Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Let's go to James, the fifth chapter. James, the fifth chapter. Just go ahead. One more book from Hebrews. James 5. So we're given examples of how not to be like Israel. But then we're given examples of how to be like Israel. James 5 and verse 9. Brother, go ahead. Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. Take my brethren, the prophets, whom who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Uh-huh. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. So now the Lord is showing us how we're supposed to conduct ourselves according to the nation of Israel. And the prophets were all Israelites. And we know the disciples were all Israelites. In fact, this entire Bible written by Israel and for Israel. So that they can come on into the knowledge to teach the rest of the nations on how to gain salvation. Let's go to 1 Peter, the second chapter. Just go ahead a few chapters. 1 Peter 2. And brother, we're going to read one verse, verse 21. 2 and 21. Go ahead. For even hereunto we are called we're called because Christ awful also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Even Jesus, an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, is our example of how to conduct ourselves. Another scripture says if you say you know Jesus, you ought to act like he did. And he was the Holy One of Israel, perfect without sin. Let's go to Jude. The first chapter, just go ahead a couple more books, if you will, a few pages. You'll get the Jude. It's right before Revelation. Jude 1. And we're going to read verse 3, brother. 1 and 3. Go ahead. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. That faith once delivered unto the saints is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which was given to Moses and all the prophets, and then was expounded on by the disciples in Jesus in the New Testament. Skip the five and continue, brother. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. That's because the when they came out of Egypt, you had those that were obedient, but the ones that weren't, the Lord destroyed. For our example, the ones that were obedient made the land. The ones that weren't got destroyed in the wilderness. Go ahead and continue, brother. Verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Go ahead. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. You've got Sodom and Gomorrah, an example of eternal fire, an example of suffering and vengeance. But you had a man, Lot, who was over there who was righteous, and though he wasn't an Israelite, He's an example of how to conduct yourself before the Lord. He's a righteous man in the midst of an unrighteous nation, and he's over there fearing God and keeping his commandments to the point that when the Lord destroyed those nations, it was only him and his family that the Lord brought out and saved. But he saved them because of obedience, and it's for our example. Let's go to 1 John, the second chapter. Back it up a little bit. First John 2, we're going to read one verse, brother, verse 6. First John 2 and 6, I alluded to this verse earlier. Go ahead. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So if you say you abide in Christ Jesus, you ought to walk even as he walked. Let's go to Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians, the second chapter. Philippians 2, and brother, we're going to pick this up at verse 14. 2 and verse 14, go ahead. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. 
serve God the without evil. murmurings and disputing, because we're supposed to fear God and keep his commandments. It's our whole duty. We don't put that on a shelf at all. That's a 24-7 job, sisters and brothers. So the Lord is telling us what to do here. Do it without murmurings and disputings. Go ahead. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of this crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Just like Lot did. And the only way you can be blameless and that you can be harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, and letting your light shine, is by taking hold of those commandments and keeping them with the right spirit. It's the only way, sisters and brothers. Let's make this clear what our light is. Let's go to Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, and we will end this here. Deuteronomy 4. Deuteronomy 4. Look what the Lord told the nation of Israel. And we know that as strangers or as physical Gentiles, that we have to become part of the commonwealth of Israel. Mm -hmm. And this is our light, sisters and brothers. Deuteronomy 4. Verses 5 and 6, brother, and this will be it. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land, whether ye go to possess it. And we Keep should therefore do so now them. so that we can get to the land one day and possess it. Go ahead, brother. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say surely this is a great nation is a wise and understanding people this is what jesus meant sisters and brothers when he said let your light shine to not be ashamed of him your light is the keeping of the commandments of christ jesus so sisters and brothers israel for our examples and as always we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide god's word and hope you got something from these scriptures